Hello, my name is Alex Josh, and today we're going to be talking about VMware Cloud on AWS. In this quick demonstration, we're going to go through the first day or day zero experience of what happens when you create a brand new organization and your first SCGC. The organization within VMware Cloud and AWS is the fundamental tenant structure, which means that all your resources are there. So you'll, re you'll re receive an invite to join the service, and you'll be prompted to log in with your VMware ID. This is your ID that you use to log into myvmware.com. When you do that, that causes us to create what's called an organization construct. This is a place where all the resources are going to be, and this allows you to also invite other people from your organization. So I'm just going to complete my login here. And then all that happen is in the background, my organization gets created. Before I can log in for the first time, however, I have to agree to the terms of service. So these are pretty standard terms, so I click OK. And now the organization create continues in the background. Once the system gets logged in, what I'll see is I'll see the login for VMR Cloud on AWS. As you can see, I have a new organization called Alex Josh's organization, and I'm the logged in user. The first thing you're probably going to want to do is invite other people to your org. So I'm going to invite Mr. Blurry email. Um, and this person will also be a organization owner. The only difference between owners and members is that owners can invite other people. And I'm an owner, so I can invite other people. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create an SDDC. However, I don't yet have a linked um, AWS account. So what that means is that we don't have the ability to connect the new SDDC to AWS. So that's the first thing that I'm going to have to do. And what I did is I clicked the link there, and now I log in, um, again, it's Mr. Blurry email, to my AWS console. And what's going to happen is I'm going to be prompted to run a CloudFormation template. And this CloudFormation template was written by VMware. And in effect, what it does is it delegates access to your VPC to, um, on our behalf. So you'll see the details here, and it'll say create is in progress. And I'll just go ahead and refresh the screen a couple of times and fast forward a few seconds. And you'll see that it's working. And after a few seconds, you'll see a create complete for the core job. As you can see, there's a lot of work being done. We're creating IAM roles, we're doing delegations and things like that. Um, this takes you know a couple minutes. I've compressed it a little bit here for the sake of the demonstration. And you'll get a create on, a core, on the core job. And if you go back to the original screen, now it says that it's completed. And I can proceed to the next step in creating an SDDC. So I click on Next. I give my SDDC a name. And I say how many hosts that I want. Now, in this case, I'm only allowed to use four hosts. But um, if you are a regular user, you'll be able to use four to 16 hosts. But in this case, we'll just go ahead and create a four node cluster. Now, I'm going to have to pick a VPC to connect to. Now, this is this VPC that's tied to the account that I just logged into a few minutes ago. Also, notice I was prompted to pick uh, a subnet. So what's happening is, is that we're trying, we're uh, connecting our SDDC to a subnet that's in the same AZ that the physical instances are going to be deployed into. So it's really important you have to have a subnet, at least one subnet, available in the AZ in which you wish to provision your host into. Now in this case I have one in all three AZs, so I pick the correct AZ and I'm off and running. Then you pick a CIDR range, so this is the uh, group of IP addresses that the management VMs will use as part of this um, environment. Very important to note that this cannot be changed. So be very careful to pick a CIDR range that's correct and it'll be, uh, you'll be able to leave it that way. You cannot change the CIDR address after the SDDC is created. So this takes a few seconds. And again, I've compressed this video a little bit so you're not sitting here watching dials spin for longer than absolutely necessary. What's happening in the background is we're creating a job that, that provisions your SDDC. And ultimately when that works, you see this screen here. Um, you'll notice that it's giving a time estimate of about 99 minutes. So it's anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours, sometimes a little longer, sometimes a little less. Um, we'll do our best to give an estimate. Um, obviously, I'm not going to make you wait for the whole two hours here, so I've compressed this video again, and just to show you that the time estimate's cranking down. So we can sit here and watch this run, but I won't, I'll spare you that. So I'm going to just go ahead and skip ahead again. And then after when it's done, what you see is you see this card, which is a running SDDC. Um, the dials are all blank right now because there's nothing running, but after a while what would happen is these dials would populate and you would see capacity numbers. Um, this represents a networking topology of the SAC that you just created, and notice that the management cider block that I specified is there. 
The first thing that I'm going to have to do is give myself access to the SDDC because by default all ports are blocked. So I'll create a rule that allows me to talk to vCenter over the over 443, which is the HTTPS port. Um, so I'll basically say anybody can talk to VC over 443. And this will allow me to log in. Now later you might want to change this, you might want to have a specified range, but just for the purpose of the demonstration, we'll, we'll just say that anybody who wants to can talk to VC over 443. So now if I try to go to connect to VC, um, I need to copy my username. Um, and then when I do that, I can go ahead and click connect. And then I get the um, H5C client, the H5 client. And I get my password back from that screen again. I paste it in here and I say login. So basically what you have now is a fully up and running software defined data center with vCenter, NSX, and vSAN all running within the AWS infrastructure. The set operation took um, from, from beginning to end took about two hours and I've compressed it down into about five minutes here. I hope you've enjoyed our demo today. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. And please enjoy using VMware Cloud on AWS in the future.